Natalie Dyer is a research scientist with a doctorate in neuroscience and postdoctoral research fellowships in psychology from Harvard. She's currently focused on studying the effects of Reiki biofield therapy on physical and psychological health. Natalie is currently the president of the Center for Reiki Research and is the co-editor of the book Expanding Science, Visions of a Post-Materialist Paradigm. Timestamps are in the description. We hope you enjoy the interview. So Natalie, to start us off, can you please tell me a little bit about your background and about your main areas of research interest? Yeah, sure. Um, and thanks for having me, Ben. Um, happy to meet you and have this conversation. So me too. Um, Thank you. <clears throat> my background, yeah, I I always kind of split it into two things, like my science background and my spiritual background, and at some point mm -hmm. they end up finally intersecting. But um, so from a young age, I was uh, <clears throat> I I thought a lot about reality. I, I noticed my parents were suffering, you know, they didn't have a lot of emotion regulation, there was a lot of arguing in the home, and it caused a lot of questioning. So mm -hmm. kind of like, this isn't right. And there's more to life than this, and kind of spending a lot of time alone and introspecting. And um, so I had this kind of innate connection to something greater and feeling like, um, this isn't my home, like I'm from somewhere else. I'm, you know, so kind of this vague sort of feeling that there's more to life than what's going on and trying to find meaning in things. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And along those same lines, like there's the spiritual path that some people take with those, that type of questioning. And then there's the scientific or philosophical path that people take um, with that kind of questioning. So I sort of took both um, and I ended up um, doing really well in, in the sciences and um, very, um, very much uh, interested in the mind and, and life as well. So psychology and biology. And so that's what I ended up studying in university. And I was, I was looking for answers and I was looking for truth. Um, definitely truth was my, my beacon. Um, and then I, I've had all these experiences along the way. So um, intuitive or psychic experiences, um, mostly in dreams when I was younger. So um, very minor things, but I found that they were useful for showing me <clears throat> that there's something going on. So an example I use often is I was I was sleeping and my mom was out uh, getting groceries. And I think I was probably around 11 or 12 at this point. And I, in my dream, she got two things of grapes, like two bunches of grapes, which she's never done. I'm like, oh, two, two things of grapes. I wake up yes. and I go downstairs and um, I open the fridge and there's two things of grapes. So I was like, oh, she's like, oh, they were on sale. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So little things like that, that I felt were like kind of breadcrumbs, nothing huge, nothing, you know, but it got more and more and more and, you know, um, dreams of people that passing away before they did and that kind of thing, including my mother, um, who passed away a few years ago. Um, <clears throat> so I had these experiences and then I'm in the sciences and in the sciences, it's like all of that doesn't exist. You know, all of yeah. that is just <laughs> BS um, because of this materialist <laughs> paradigm. So I was kind of confused and more disenchan disenchanted with science and um but at that age still kind of like okay well this is this is the truth this is the path so I sort of I kind of just split myself into two minds yeah. so to speak um having these experiences and then my um courses and stuff telling me that it's pseudoscience or or whatever um <clears throat> but thankfully um somewhere around I guess so I, I, sorry, I ended up doing my PhD in neuroscience, uh, looking at um, behavioral neuroscience, looking at anxiety regulation in the brain, and very much from a materialist pharmaceutical approach. Um, yeah. And then I somehow discovered, and I don't know why I didn't discover it earlier, maybe because science just ignores it, um, everyone else's work, like Dean Radin, as you mentioned, Mario Beauregard, Rupert Sheldrake, and all of a sudden that just kind of opened to me. And I was like, wow, I can scientifically study these things. <laughs> like. If you're using the scientific method, it's not pseudoscience. So, yeah. and there are other people doing this. So I found this whole community. Um, and then I went from this pharmaceutical approach to my research to um, more mind-body medicine to start mindfulness research, yoga. Um, and then I learned Reiki along the way. Um, and now that's kind of one of my primary research areas, um, Reiki and other sort of integrative medicine practices. Um, so that's where I'm at now. And I've successfully blended my... <laughs> my two selves into one, which is, <laughs> which is really nice. And uh, 
Yeah. 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 So that's where I'm wow. at. Wow. That's awesome. I'm happy you managed to, to merge those two sides because yeah, I imagine <laughs> lots of people don't get that and they don't have that, that light switch moment where they don't. find Dean and, and, and what have yeah. you. Yeah. And so probably people live a whole life like in conflict, like having these experiences, but then at the same time, yeah, having to be professional and at their Yeah, their, their they do. Uh, a lot of a lot of researchers are scared to step out of that materialist closet or whatever you want to call it. Um yeah. I, I never felt that way for whatever reason. That's a question I get. Like, how are you, you know, explaining to your colleagues? And well, now all my colleagues are all for it. So I'm surrounded with it now. So, yeah. but in the beginning, yeah, there were people like, oh, don't study pseudoscience. And I just knew that they were misinformed. <laughs> so like, okay. Yeah. Eh. yeah, it's frustrating, isn't it? But yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's like you said, materialism is so deeply ingrained that I guess that's the... It's just the, the way it is for now, unfortunately, but it's definitely getting <laughs> yeah. better, or at least I think it's getting better. It is, um, yeah. Maybe we'll circle back to that later. So you mentioned that Reiki is one of your main areas of research interest. So that's mm -hmm. obviously something I'd love to talk about in a good, some, some depth today. So mm -hmm. I guess, firstly, how do you define it? What is Reiki in kind of, in, a, in some detail? Like how, what's your mm -hmm. definition of it? And, and yeah. yeah. <clears throat> What does it bring to mind when I say Reiki? Sure. Yeah. So there's the Reiki as the practice, and then there's sort of the whole idea of what's really going on. So I feel like the practice is contained within a larger, what's called biofield healing. So uh, okay. biofield therapies or biofield healing um, is uh, various therapies that work with information or energy surrounding or within the individual, um, usually for a healing purpose, uh, relaxation, healing. Um, mm -hmm. And Reiki is one of those. And Reiki is um, more of a, a recently developed one, really. It's 100 years old, but we have Qigong predating that by a few, few thousand years. Um, don't know the exact date, but um, so it's one practice developed in Japan um, in 1922, <laughs> um, where uh, you use various symbols which have meaning to them. And you're, the idea is that Reiki, I should say, stands for, loosely translates to universally guided life force energy. So the idea is that there's this universal energy, chi, prana, various names, spirit, whatever you want to call it, that's infinite and everywhere. And we are tapping into it all the time. It's how we're alive. <laughs> it's our spirit. Um, and when you learn these practices, you consciously learn to bring more of that energy in and give it to another person or yourself. Um, in And it's it's said to have its own intelligence. So it guides its own kind of healing. So um, it goes where it's needed, sort of like um, diffusion or osmosis sort of thing, like where it's lacking. Yeah, that's, it'll move that's wild. <laughs> um, but I like to say that, like, I don't ever want to say like, oh, it's a special thing that only I can do or only these people can do. Everyone is doing this all the time. Like our breath brings in prana and chi and, and it's just a way of like consciously doing that. Um, and it's, it's really, really powerful. And I, when I got trained in it, it was just kind of one of those serendipitous things where I didn't even know why I was training and I didn't believe in it. I was just, I'm, I am naturally skeptical, <laughs> believe it or not. I need the data, whether it's like my own data or the actual research to confirm what I believe. So I'm, I'm always skeptical. So I was like, I don't even know why I'm here. Um, and the teacher said, well, that's good. So it's just like a calling. I'm like, okay, I guess. <laughs> Um, and I still didn't believe in it until I actually practiced it. And then I saw the effects in uh, my friends and family members that I was practicing with. And um, one of the things that was surprising to me was the information that comes through. I wasn't expecting that. I thought, okay, I'm just channeling this energy. Don't even know what that's going to feel like. Well, it feels like you've had a lot of caffeine or something. Like you can really feel like this buzzing sometimes, or you just feel heat or wow. um, this flow. And, um, but when you're connecting deeply with someone in that way, um, you can pick up a lot of information. So whether that information is in their actual physical field or whether it's um, in like zero point or like some non-local space, not sure. But that was the surprising um, aspect of it was, oh, wow, like I, I see this thing that happened to you. Did this happen to you? And this is why your energy is a little off. So it's, I really, I think it has a lot of value because you're not just channeling this energy, but you're getting kind of to the root of how these imbalances occurred. So with these biofield um, therapies, the idea is that any kind of disease or whether it's mental, physical, um, any kind of hang up or issue um, relates to an imbalance, whether it's a lack of energy flow or just more energy in one area than another, 
Um, and then if we have this kind of perfect flowing energy, then, you know, that's the template for like the ideal healthy, healthy human. So <clears throat> our behaviors, our thoughts, um, our beliefs can change the distribution of that energy. And over time, um, that can cause health problems. So if one area of your body is not getting a lot of energy, obviously it's not getting nutrients, it's not getting oxygen, it's not, so then that can create um, disease. So that's the idea there. And it provides you with a little bit of a roadmap of how the person got there. Um, I'm not tr sure if that's true of every Reiki practitioner, but it is true of at least some of them that they they get kind of shown how that happened. And then, so it's always, it's not a, wow. it's not a quick fix. It's not a, it's not a bandaid either. It's, it's really, there's homework usually for the client. It's like, okay, so this came about because of this, like you had potentially, you know, one client recently had um, heartbreak. It's like, oh, at, you know, a teenager, you, your heart was broken. Like that. And that causes problem with intimacy. And like, and so you've not, oh yeah, I've never married. I've never, you know, connect. So you can see this cascade of, of what's happened. So it's always like, there's some kind of homework there. It's like, there's something to do to, to help that. Otherwise you kind of just will default back to that state and you could just keep getting these sessions, but ultimately the idea is to get to the root, <laughs> hopefully, yeah. fix, hopefully fix the issue. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. There's so many, so many things I want to ask you about everything <laughs> you just said. Um, I guess let's start by asking um, research. So into how much research has been done into its effectiveness? You said you weren't quite convinced until you started doing it with friends and family and seeing results mm -hmm. like personally. Yeah. So yeah, is there is there much research? Is there any evidence that you say suggests that it's, you know, like genuine? I don't know the right word. Yeah, but... yeah. Um, so there's, in terms of actual Reiki research, there's about a hundred studies, which isn't a lot. Um, it sounds like a lot, um, but when it's a paradigm shifting kind of um, yeah. area, it's not enough. <laughs> I don't know if it'll ever, enough, ever be enough for some people, but <laughs> um, but as an example, um, chiropractic care, which some people are still skeptical of, but a lot of people accept it, um, is uh, has less research than Reiki, from what I've what I've found anyway. But it's it's you know insurance will cover it, and, but Reiki is kind of this area where it just doesn't make sense to a lot of people. Um, and a lot of people will say, oh, it's just placebo. So, um, but the research, yeah, it's, it needs work because there's a lot of, um, one-off pilot studies, but what we do see is that it's definitely beneficial for, um, anxiety, stress, depression, and pain. And all of those things are very psychological, um, including pain, pain has a huge psychological component. Um, and we're not really sure why it's fixing those things or why it's helping those things. Um, but those symptoms are highly um, um, benefited through Reiki practice. So um, including in like well-controlled studies, um, but we do need to do more research for sure to um, shift healthcare, shift culture um, toward accepting it because it, it's a really beautiful practice um, to really um, get to the root of these issues. And there's um, we did a study on the experience of a Reiki session. So I don't know if you've ever had Reiki, but for some people, um, it can be a really powerful experience in itself. It's mm -hmm. not, you know, you get a massage, it's relaxing. Oh, I feel so much better. But with Reiki, like you might be visited by um, a deceased loved one, or you might um, go on a whole psychedelic type journey. Um, you might see an alien, like, but then there's like messages that come through. And so it can be really, really profound for the individual. Um, and we did a study looking at that subjective experience um, and a really important component of the Reiki um, experience is what we call like an emotional release or emotional healing. So a lot of people will feel like um, maybe they cry or maybe they just feel like some kind of emotional block has been released. Like, oh, wow, I've been carrying that around for so long. I didn't even know about it. And I finally let that go and they feel lighter and the, and the energy can flow. And um, so it's kind of like releasing the blocks. And we find that's highly related to improvements in um, these psychological aspects. So it's like um, anxiety and depression, for example. So, so it has a really profound effect at a deep level of getting up some kind of stored emotion or um, something yeah. that needs to be released that often people don't even know is there. They, I've had clients be like, Oh, I thought I dealt with that. What the heck? Like, <laughs> you know, so, 
Um, it can be really profound. Yeah. Um, it's fun yeah. too. It's fun. It's a fun thing. It's, you know, it's kind of magical. <laughs> it's like, it's wow, cool. this works. And wow, this is so interesting. And every session, you don't know what's going to come up. And um, yeah, it's one of the, it's, I'm really, really um, grateful that I got into the practice. I think it's changed my life in many ways and definitely increased intuition. And I, anyone that wants to increase their intuition, I would recommend that they get trained in in Reiki or some other kind of energy healing or biofield therapy as well, because it, it really teaches you to connect on a deep level where potentially that information is stored. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it helps you to get information from, yeah, non-local, non-local yes. means. Um, yeah. So yeah. in some of those studies, I'm supposing that this was the case, but hopefully you can let me know. Were there some like that were done in a blind sense? So some of the people that were receiving the Reiki um, treatment were not aware they were receiving the Reiki treatment, and and uh, yeah, Did yeah. Some of, some of the studies, yeah, are um, include what's called sham Reiki. Um, so with sham Reiki, or some people call it fakey, <laughs> um, <laughs> you you just kind of teach someone to put your hands here and there and there, but they're not trained in Reiki. They're just kind of imitating a session, and we will see like benefits of that, just not yeah, to the, not to the extent of an actual. Are they still trying to heal the person? Uh, they're not, they're usually given some kind of cognitive task, like counting okay. back from a hundred, something like really boring or like thinking about your grocery list or something, something to kind of distract them, um, mentally. That's why they, yeah. you won't use a Reiki trained person because the idea is that, oh, they might just be channeling it anyway, even if they're like not trying to. So it's usually like a research assistant, a student, um, someone who has no experience in any of these practices, even meditation, because if you're a if you're a seasoned meditator, I think there's some, you know, there's some energy medicine going on there too. If you, if you, mm. um, very briefly, we did a study back at Harvard where we had meditators, like 20 plus year meditators in a room. Um, and then in that, in that same room, I think it was the same room in a different condition. We had people watching like a horror movie and then, and then people like a new group of people coming in and the people that came in after the people were meditating there, they felt calmer, they felt more relaxed. They're like, Oh, like, and they, they did better on certain cognitive tasks and stuff. So there's something to that as well. Like yeah, having a meditative practice and creating sort of this calm space that people can pick up on. So yeah, you wouldn't want anyone with any of that kind of experience doing it. So that's usually how it's done. And, and we do see benefits often of that sham reiki um but not to the level of a real reiki session and we think that's you know there are placebo components which are is like a real effect being cared for having someone like lightly touching you and um so there are definitely components there but we're trying to control just for the the reiki itself um but like i said in the beginning everyone's channeling this energy all the time so it's really hard to have a really good placebo for that i think with distance reiki studies that's a lot easier um mm -hmm. because as long as it's not done with video. So the way Reiki distance Reiki used to be done a lot before we had zoom was just offline, like go, you tell the client, go lay down at this time and I'm going to send you the energy. And then, um, and that's easy to do a placebo control. Cause you just tell them, okay, go lay down and I'm going to send you the energy. And it kind of yeah. takes out a lot of the, the, um, components that can muddy it a bit. So, um, in those, we do see that, um, the real Reiki improves, uh, these outcomes beyond the sham. Um, but we're about to run another study like that to um, to really see what's going on there and to look at the belief in the individual as well. And cool. we like to test also, do, do you think you got the Reiki or you didn't get the Reiki? And um, a study I read yesterday, they um, didn't show as much benefits as you would like from the Reiki, but they all, all the people that got the real Reiki knew they got the Reiki compared mm -hmm. to the control. So that was interesting. It's like they yeah. knew they were getting something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. it's just there's so many like you know little things like blanks that we need to fill in right yes. as you were saying there's not enough research on mm -hmm. on this oh like, um, so much yeah Do dosage like time there's so much yeah so much to yeah. uh, to unravel <laughs> yeah and i have like yeah and i have so many questions like burning to, to to get out and ask you about it it's just it's really interesting um so you said that, that it helps it's you you know it helps with anxiety stress depression and pain mm -hmm. um so is there any evidence that it can help with physical things or not even necessarily you know scientific studies but is, is there any you know anecdotal evidence or you know evidence oh, that yeah have you had that with with family members or friends like physical ailments i don't know 
what kind of things like yeah all kinds of things all kinds of tons of anecdotal that's for sure um but not just anecdotal briefly um the research shows it reduces inflammation so looking at um inflammatory markers um also like like blood pressure heart rate um these kinds of things so there is a anti-inflammatory response which is associated with the relaxation response so it's, it's highly relaxing um and you need to be in that state that parasympathetic state to heal anything so if you're all stressed, your body's not focusing on healing. Um, anecdotally, yeah, tons of things. Um, from like acne, like things you don't even expect. Like you have, a, I had a client and she had a deep like cystic acne. So like hormonal acne. And that wasn't what the session was about. It was just um, she wanted to relax. She wanted to experience it. Um, but she said like right after the session, she started itching all along where it is. <laughs> And then it just disappeared. And she she had been struggling with it for years. Um, wow. And uh, so that that went away. Um, clients with MS where their symptoms greatly improved. Um, all kinds of like other practitioners. I know that their clients with cancer um, went into remission. Um, so there's a, there is a lot of anecdotal evidence. Um, there's also evidence on improving um, like range of motion for people with arthritis. And so there are some like more objective measures as well, not just these self-report like psychological measures. Um, so yeah. within the principles of Reiki, the idea is that it can heal anything. I, I don't know if it can. I, I feel like there are sometimes illness is part of a journey, you know, sometimes, yeah. Someone once said to me, if, if Reiki works, why do Reiki people die? You know, like, shouldn't you just live forever? And I'm like, I'm not convinced we're supposed to be here forever. <laughs> You know, I think there's better things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. <laughs> it has its own Funny intelligence. Yeah. It. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that that idea is really interesting. Yeah, that it kind of, you, you, there's only a certain amount of control that humans can have on it. It's like yes, we yeah. can kind of tap into it and maybe help to to, to direct it possibly or or what have you. And then yeah. it, it does its thing, which is really Exactly, big. exactly. And you can't, Otherwise, like you're just, what are you just changing reality all the time? I mean, so one kind of example, just a recent example is um, Reiki has helped me be able to connect with cats, which is a very surprising thing. At some point, someone asked me to help their cat out. And um, so I've had quite a few clients with cats that have run away and then connecting with the cats um, through Reiki um, and then having this dialogue with the cat. I don't know if it's a higher self or what, what's going on there, but it's always really interesting. <laughs> And yeah. all of them have come back um, through different ways. So, so some they want they want their owner to just like chill out a bit. Like you're just stressing me out. Can you just it's calm too down? Much for me. Yeah, yeah. Like one was like, you don't know what it's like living with her. I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, like, and then I got to tell her like, just chill out. Like, <laughs> give them space, and then they come back. Um, but one recently was like, so a client wants their cat to come back, and this recent cat. It's like, I'm too scared to go to try to, find, like, they're being taken care of somewhere else. That's what's going on. And they're too scared to take that journey to go home. Um, they're not a brave cat. And this person really wants their cat to come home. And I, I had to say, like, do you want them to risk their life for you to come, for them to come home? Because that's what I'm seeing. I'm not going to force this cat, like, try to force this cat to, like, go through a city to try to find their way back to you, you know? So yeah. maybe put up more posters, like, extend the area. That's the only way the cat, this, this this cat's coming back is if the person who's taking care of it contacts you. Um, so, like, I can't manipulate reality, you know? It's like you can you can help a little bit, but um, where that boundary is, I don't know. It's, it's very interesting because you are, you know, manipulating reality in some sense. You're moving the energy around. You're getting information that's changing trajectories in people's lives, and um, and how much of that you should do and shouldn't do. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What the possibilities? And nobody knows, I suppose. But it's, yeah. yeah, it's really interesting to think about that. That the, the cat thing, right? Let's be honest. There's probably a few people listening that just went, "Wow, that's that's too much for me." They I'm lost sure. me now. I'm sure. So so let's break that down. Like, how did that first come about? You no doubt, I can I can I can forget the feeling that you probably questioned yourself about that a lot and like doubted it and were like, "Whoa, yeah. like what what just happened?" Um, so just talk 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 us through that a little bit. Give us yeah. That's why I say like that. it's that's why I say like it's kind of fun. You just got to go with it, and sometimes. I just go with it. I don't know. See what happens. I don't charge yeah. people like this recent client. I'm like, I'm not charging you. If the cat comes back, you can donate, you know, like I'm not going to be ch 
charging someone for that because <laughs> I'm just not as confident. I, even though like all these cats have come back, I'm still like, mm, if they come back, you can donate if you want. But, you know, so yeah, I don't even know how that started. I think at some point a friend asked me to help their cat um, and it wasn't to return. It was just, they had like an illness and, and one thing that all these cats energy have in common, and it makes sense if you know cats, I guess, is they want space and they want respect. And I just, <clears throat> consciousness is sort of outside of, it seems outside of species. So you have different levels of consciousness, right? And you have like a higher mm-hmm. level of consciousness that can maybe, maybe incarnate in different types of species. Yeah. I don't know. That kind of survives <laughs> above us. And like when yeah. we die, it's, it remains probably. And yeah. Yeah. Like you say, can... Yeah. So I feel like Reiki is connecting with the highest, that highest level of consciousness where we're more, more connected with each other. So mm-hmm. if you think of resonance, if we're all at this higher level of consciousness, this one mind, it's going to resonate more. If you can tap into that part of yourself, you're going to resonate with that part of that being. Um, whereas if you're in your like thinking mind, your little me, me consciousness, it's further away from that. Um, if that makes sense. Like you can't really connect yeah. in that way. Um, so connecting at that level, we're all quite similar, um, in terms of like access to that information. I don't know how else to say it. Um, so I just used Reiki and a lot of people do animal Reiki, um, there's this whole like donkey sanctuary where they do Reiki with them. A lot of people do horse Reiki. There's been some studies. Um, so I just reiki them. I wasn't expecting to have like a conversation. It was just like, oh, yeah, send send your cats. And, and it was like, oh, can he just leave me alone? I was like, whoa, OK. <laughs> like, like he was obsessing with them. Like, are you OK? Are you OK? OK. It's like, I just want some space. Um, and then that cat got better. Um, and I'm like, okay, fine. And then just more and more and more people just contact me. I've never been contacted for a dog or anything. It's just cats. Um, and I'm not, I'm not even a cat person. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm more of a dog person, but, but working with them has been really, really interesting. So you just got to like put aside all that skeptical, you just got to go with it, see what comes through yeah. and hope that you have the guts to like share it with the person. It's like, oh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is just like totally off. And it's like, well, whatever. If you're not charging them, at least that makes it easier to like, here's what came through. Like, I'm not like yeah. soliciting you for money for this. This is just, you know. Um, so I understand totally people being like, okay, that's that's it. Like, I don't believe, now everything she's saying, forget it. But I get, <laughs> I get that too with just distance Reiki. As soon as like, like people will believe in person race, Reiki and then I'm like, oh, and then distance, they're like, okay, you lost me. That's it. And yeah, I find that strange. If you can believe, okay. like, if you can believe in person, but but you know, but still, you're you're healing somebody basically by just being there and or lightly touching them. Yeah, surely you can believe that it can be done remotely. But again, yeah, like, I don't know. I, I, don't I, mean, know. I mean, it's like the remote viewing. There's tons of research mm-hmm. on that, and somehow, like with these cats, the Reiki has connected me to remote viewing. And I think it's all one process where you're connecting to that that one mind that that um overarching over soul of everything whether it's humanity or all um god source um yeah and then whatever's coming through is coming through so for me reiki was the way that i was able to tap into that but i think everybody has that potential if you can focus enough if you can calm your mind get that little ego mind out of the way um and connect at the heart so i think those are really important components is being mindful being present focused I put all those together sort of and then the heart center so you really got to love the person you got to really have compassion and care for them um that builds the bridge um so I I, through this work I've learned a lot about like love being this kind of connector of consciousness which is really really interesting um and I find that's the bridge so if I'm not in that state if I'm not feeling love for the person or compassion it's weaker, like it's not flowing. And I have to like switch myself. I'm like probably thinking about something. So really get in there. And um, the the most that you can not even have a division where you're loving them, like you are love, like it's all just one package, like you're, there's no separation. Then all this information comes through connected to that, um, which is really, really interesting. Um, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, really interesting. It's all about like connection and, and things like that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's so fascinating. There's, again, we, we'll probably come back to this, but there's just probably lots of or infinite potentially ways of like tapping into mm -hmm. this, right? Like, yes. uh, and, and this is one of the, the most well-known ones, but I'm sure there are lots of other little ve with various differences sometimes subtle mm -hmm. differences sometimes mm -hmm. enormous differences and yes. sometimes they probably seem like completely different practices and yet it's kind of tapping into that same fundamental force yes um, and, and i like i like that love is that bridge because it means that you're having a benevolent cause right like it means like some sneaky little jerk isn't like tapping into your consciousness and learning about you and manipulating you you know yeah. it's like you have to be that loving force to build that bridge to to so that's like the gateway it's like the test like if you can love enough then you can help in this way um mm -hmm. it's kind of like a safe mechanism i think i'm sure there are nefarious people that are still tapping in and blah, 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 but i don't think it's as powerful mm. so i guess maybe it's a good time if you can explain how it actually works like how do we physically go about it how do you do it and um what's the difference in in person and remote other than the mm -hmm. obvious differences mm -hmm. um i guess we'll start with that yeah yeah sure so um i don't know about other practices i haven't been trained in uh, qigong i've done a little bit of self qigong but um for reiki um when you get trained you learn different symbols that connect you so there's um i guess i'll start with in person um mm -hmm. so there's different symbols that you kind of start to initiate the practice um I don't believe they're necessary, but what I do believe is they reinforce intention. It's like, I'm doing this thing and, you know, I'm visualizing this. So now I'm doing this. Um, but I don't think it's necessary because sometimes I forgot to do the symbols. It still works anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it, it does reinforce your intention and um, and your focus. Um, so you connect with these symbols. Um, some people just you know, center their energy, make sure that your mind is clear. Um, if you have a meditation practice or yoga, that definitely helps. Um, I did meditation before Reiki. So I think that was probably easier because I could just tap in pretty easily to getting the ego out, out of the way and not thinking and just being there with them. So you want to clear your energy. Um, some people like to, I always like to um, thank the Reiki lineage, thank all the all the people that I've learned from um, give gratitude because that's a good space to be into opens up the heart as well. Um, some people bring in, it's not necessarily part of Reiki, but some people work with different entities and bring in like, who know, like whoever to help. I don't really do that. Sometimes like channeling. Yeah. Like some people will like there's like Christian Reiki, for example. So some people will be like, they're only comfortable if like Jesus, if they call on Jesus to be a part of it. Otherwise it might be like, demonic yeah, or something devil. yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> so i don't like to do that because it's it just seems kind of like is that really them what's what's really happening but mm -hmm. during the session jesus might show up <laughs> um often with christian people sometimes the energy will show up and it and it helps them so i had one one client who was very much very 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 christian <laughs> but also open to it so i was like oh you know, let, let it be like Jesus is healing her. Like, let her feel that this is you, you know, Jesus. and she was like, it was Jesus's hands. It wasn't your hands. It was Jesus. I was like, okay, wow. <laughs> like, perfect. Like, whatever works. <laughs> um, so some people do work with different guides and all of that. And um, sometimes I do, but not, I don't find it to be particularly useful. I just, I find these are like lower levels of consciousness. Like, let's just go to the top and like, let's just channel that pure energy. That's kind of the way I like to work. Um, yeah. But some people work with other entities, so they might do that as well. And then there's sort of a standard procedure of where you put your hands, starting at the the eyes, the head, and working down, loosely correlating to the chakras, although it's not a part of Reiki. It's become a part of Reiki, like the chakra okay. system. Um, that's not really part of the, the Japanese tradition. It's a more of an Indian tradition, but they've sort of all merged together. So we do tend to focus on the chakras, energy centers in the body. Um, and then there's like an intuitive aspect. So sometimes like, like there's a standard treatment, but you might be guided to like put your hands somewhere else. So in person, it's usually hands on gently, um, except for sensitive areas. Um, you wouldn't put them on a woman's chest, for example, that kind of thing. Um, or like lightly off, or you can even just sit in the room and channel like at a distance. Sometimes I find that more powerful if I'm just like, mm, you know, 
Um, and then there's working with like the different levels of the aura, if you like. So the energy around the body as well. Um, you can like cross called cross balancing, make sure that the left and right sides of the body are flowing kind of equally. Everyone's sort of off of it. Like mm -hmm. I tend to cross my legs one way. So I'm a little like I'm weaker on my left side. Um, and then during that, some information might come up or like for me, because it's a, more of a physical thing in person, it's more like I feel heat in certain areas or I feel there's a block here um, or maybe I feel some emotion that the person needs to release. Um, and then so that's like the in-person session and it's usually very relaxing and sometimes um, the person does cry if they need to release. I used to say like women cry and men sleep because that's just what I found. Like <laughs> the men would just yeah. like pass out right away, <laughs> like snore and I'm like, fuck. And the women would be like, oh, anyway, not to like, you know, polarize it but that's just like the tendency that i've that i've seen um with distance um there's a distance symbol so you, you learn that at a, the second level of reiki so that's where you're really focusing to start and that symbol is like to me it, it means like okay space is no longer a thing like now like space is collapsed they're here with me or i'm with them or whatever um mm -hmm. and there's not that moving around so some people they'll use like a doll or something as like a proxy, um, like a stuffed animal. And then they'll put their hands on the stuffed animal. I don't do that. I don't never found that to be like natural for me or very beneficial. I find it more because then it's like, I don't know, there's still like this physical component. To me, the distance is a very non-physical thing. So I'll usually just kind of um, cup the person in my hands, so to speak, or um even just send without hands um, or I'll just like move my hands or pretend they're kind of here or um, and then because I think because it's well to connect across space like you got to tap into that whatever it is zero point yeah. um, more information comes through with the distance I prefer the distance um, in person I'm moving around I'm like sweating I'm like oh. and then distance is like oh. and then all this information comes um and then I just like take notes and I'll, if they're in Zoom with me, I'll just tell them what came up or if it's um, offline, I'll just write up what came up for them. Um, mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much, I don't know if I missed anything, but I also in distance, of course, thank like the lineage and thank everyone and like, um, but it, it is a lot different doing distance because I'm not necessarily going through all those postures either. I'm just kind of like tuning in right away. Um, doing like an overview like because space is an illusion a very strong illusion I can like cup them in my hand and then I can just send it all at once like I don't have to go like here 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 here. it's like okay yeah. my my hands are enormous they're in their house and like and I'm just gonna love them like that um so it's uh it's interesting yeah it's it's a little different but it's still the same kind of flow that you can feel and um pick up sort of the same thing but like I said I get more information distance and I think I am tapping in maybe to that what I like to call zero point um energy a little bit more that way yeah I'm also so an introvert so being an introvert it's like oh, I'd like to be alone and do it rather than like have a person yeah. there you know? yeah it's a bit less less pressure exactly um, <laughs> What was I going to say? I've probably lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. The, so in terms of distance or or local, you you don't really notice a massive change in effectiveness, but you notice that you can get more other like information about the person via distance. Is yes. that right? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And it's not it's not a hundred percent. Sometimes in person, I get a lot of information too. It depends, but in general, um, yeah, more information through distance. Um, in person. I think that they have more of a sensory experience in person, um, mm -hmm. whereas in distance, they have more of a um, ends up being like kind of psychotherapeutic as well. When you're doing it remotely, how frequently do you get um, like information come through about people? Is it always like psychical kind of information? Do you always get things come through um, or is it just depending mm -hmm. on the, the person and, and yeah, how much comes through and things like that? Um, yeah, I would say 90, like 5% of the time, maybe even more, I get information. Um, that you didn't know previously and that they haven't right, told you. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's sometimes it comes through symbolically, like um, one client, um, he was wounded by his mother. She just, she just like, 
moved somewhere when he was young she, but it was like an abandonment and I, I was shown like a rose came up it was like a rose and then it was like mother and so I think like rose represents a mother for some reason and, a, and then it's like mother and then this is affected relationships and so then I'm I just have to hope that it makes sense to them there's like a sort of courage in it it's like yeah, yeah. did this happen like <laughs> um and no one has ever said and maybe they're just being nice but no one's ever said like <laughs> no you're wrong like not at all it's like oh yeah my mother moved here at this age and I know I know they always know like exactly um what that was so um recent client has a lot of pain and and it was like oh there was a loss connected to this at when it started and sure enough like right when that started she lost her husband like um so it's always been verified which is nice um yeah, yeah but there was there's sometimes where all they need is to be loved as much you know corny maybe that sounds but um one client he, one of my clients is very psychoanalytical it's like in every session I'm like let's move into the heart let's move into the heart and it's like well, let's talk about the heart let's analyze the heart like that's the way he goes so the last session was like just I'm like I don't have any information for you like because that's what he needed he didn't need any more information it was like you've analyzed the heck out of your life like you just needed this energy this love and and to kind of sink into that so it's rare but sometimes it's just like just essentially just love them, just love, like, let that energy flow. Um, so that's one client. It was so, so sweet. Um, she, uh, she's out in California. She was one of those where I was like, I just, just love her. And in my head, it was just like, I love you. I love it. Like, I'm just like loving her. And then she, she said, I've never felt love before. Like she never felt love, like really harsh parents. Like, and so she had like an emotional like crying about that and like thank you for like giving me the experience of that and that's that can be powerful enough so mm. um i didn't have information for her in that session but that was like really really important to her um yeah. so then sometimes i'm like i'm just i'm loving these people and i'm charging them is that morally right like i don't even know like <laughs> i always question that too it's like <laughs> you know like yeah there's a there's a lot of the issue in the in the healing world of like that guilt like because it always goes back to i guess jesus or someone like you should just offer it for free you know um and a side note I did. Eat, yeah exactly and it's like if you want to send yeah. me my my food or you know like one person i've done exchanges before someone brought me like all these crackers and cheese and i'm like sure <laughs> why not um yeah but yeah exactly there is an energy exchange but there's still i'm always feeling like oh like, there's a little bit of guilt there but yeah. um you shouldn't yeah, be too hard and, on yourself. There yeah. are limits, right? You know, like if you yeah. were driving around in one of your 18 Rolls Royces. Yeah, today, I don't, like exactly. That, and, and like splashing the cash and, you know, living in your mansion. Then, yeah, yeah maybe, maybe I'd be like, okay, I'm a bit skeptical here. She's like charging <laughs> yeah, a fortune exactly. for this healing. She's, and I, but, and I, yeah, I should, I quickly want to just say that I did offer it for free once. I switched. I was like, okay, that's it. Like, I'm just going to do this for free. But the clientele was like, they were disrespectful. Some of them didn't show up. I'd write mm. this whole long thing for them. They wouldn't answer. They wouldn't even say thank you. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Well, I tried, but it was like <laughs> a totally different type of person. It was interesting. It's like, okay. Yeah. 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 And maybe, maybe you get to a point in your life where you feel like it's the right time to try that again or yeah, whatever. Like, yeah. Yeah. But I certainly don't think you come across as somebody that's in it with the wrong, you know, the wrong motivations, no. especially the fact <laughs> that you feel able to question your own motivations oh, always. You know, it, <laughs> on this interview. <laughs> like that says a lot because most people wouldn't, wouldn't actually feel the, you know, able to air that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I think it's, it's good to, to question yourself and to, to make sure you, you know, you still have the right intentions and motivations and i do and i mean i do have uh youtube videos like i do offer free and for a lot of people i do do it free so some i'm always like having a dialogue with myself it's like you just gave like three free sessions this month and you didn't you know like <laughs> take it easy <laughs> yeah 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 well i guess in terms of free advice so let's say we've grabbed some some people's attention and they're like oh yeah okay i want to try this is there any advice that you could give people just to maybe kind of dip their toes in the water with this kind of thing at home? Like is whether it's watching YouTube videos or trying some basic techniques or, mm -hmm. you know, doing it with a friend saying like, I'm going to try and send you something. You try and yeah, send me some yeah. good, good energy. Have you, have you got any yeah, suggestions or tips of how people can, can try and yeah, tap in? Yeah. All of those are really good ideas. I mean, you could do all of that. <laughs> um, my first experience 
um, my friend wasn't trained in Reiki. And I remember her like just putting her hands on me and I, I had my eyes closed and I could totally tell, like I felt it. I was like, oh, I'm feeling this, like you're doing something. So yeah, playing around with the energy in the hands for sure. Um, there's different, I'm sure there's tons of YouTube videos like doing different like chi balls and these kinds of things. Like you can start to like no build doubt. energy and yeah. Um, and then uh, getting a session. Yeah, for sure. Um, I would go, I think I would do it in person first. I would suggest that. Um, there's uh, There can be a lot of therapeutic um, aspect of having someone in person. I guess it depends on who you are. Some people don't want to be in person. Um, getting a session would be great. Um, training, if you feel called to. Like the first level is it's just a basic training, learning the hands-on. You don't learn to connect at distance yet. But um, that to me was really amazing because I didn't even believe it. And I took the training and mm. I was like, wow, this is something. Um, and uh, yeah, I think, yeah, doing doing distance, like trying to connect with your loved ones through distance um, is also interesting. You could try different um, this isn't really Reiki, but you could try different like telepathic kind of um, experiments and stuff like that. Yeah. Projecting different images and things like that. Um, and just playing around with it. I mean, as long as your intention is pure, I don't see the problem with that. Some people, mm. there's a big like resurgence of like Christianity that, um, and I was raised Catholic, but that is like all of this is the devil kind of thing, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think if your intention is pure, you know, you're not trying to spy on your ex and like, you know, <laughs> do something like malevolent to them, then it's all good. Like you're just trying to help people. So, yeah. 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 Just trying to help people. You said it yourself just then, like it, that it's okay to kind of play around with it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Not not exactly just Reiki, but in general, this kind of idea of, of sending energy and things. So yeah. have you tried to to play around with it a bit in terms of the healing idea, but not specifically Reiki, just trying to, you know, come up with an innovative new uh, technique or method or whatever, just, I don't know, by trying to send certain vibes or whatever yeah. while you're focused on something else or while you're in a specific altered state of consciousness or things like that. Um, I've recently thought about doing, so there was this person, totally random, but there was this person on Instagram, I don't even know who they were, and they were doing a telepathic um, uh, experiment on instagram like through a reel or something you know and it, and it, mm -hmm. someone put it on facebook as like making fun of it like this guy's you know a quack or whatever but he's like i'm just gonna project to you a number right between one and a hundred and i'm like okay like and first i was like 34 and then all i heard was like 72 72 72 like in my head constantly and i was like all right and then he's like it was 72 and i'm like all right like, really? <laughs> cool so then i thought oh maybe we can make an experiment out of this like if we just made a few video clips of different numbers being projected and then having, you know, people try to pick it up and see what, um, if they're trained in Reiki, can they pick it up more than like the average person or these kinds of things. So I'm always thinking of like fun experiments that can be done, but they do take time and they take money. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I haven't played around with like friends as much as I think I should. It would be fun. Yeah. Yeah, because that that doesn't cost money. I mean, time, yes, yeah. it's still left to be like a range, but but yeah, you can just do some kind of low key stuff and just just mess around yeah. with it. And maybe you'll find like, wow, that something really worked. But the I think reason that's... I was oh no, sorry, continue. Sorry, no, you you go, please. I was just gonna say like that's why I put up a Reiki video on YouTube as I was just curious like, is this gonna like I made that video in 2018 and people still today are like, oh, thank you, my pain is gone and yeah maybe it's a placebo but it's working for thousands of people and so if it transcends space it transcends time so i could um so it's really interesting we have this new medium um and we have zoom now and we have ways of connecting uh cross distance easier with video and so i think there's a lot that can be done there and played with yeah 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 i agree what are your thoughts on other types of healing so say um you know, like have you, I'm sure you're familiar with Bill Bengston, the Bengston method. <laughs> then also you got things like people that sometimes claim to visit a physical medium and claim somebody came through the physical medium and healed them. You know, like somebody that was a mm -hmm. doctor or what have you. Right. Um, there's mm -hmm. there's what else is there? Prayer, of course, in in people's religion. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, uh, there's probably some I'm not thinking of. Like yeah, near death experiences. Some people have a near death experience. They'll come back and they will have been healed. And, yeah. Yeah. And there's probably, yeah, numerous other ways that, that this kind of manifests itself or that this kind of works. But what mm -hmm. are your thoughts on all of that? Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, I, I definitely believe there are many, many ways um, that we kind of create these structures around it. Um, and ultimately, it's connecting with um, something greater than ourselves um, mm-hmm. through and like I, I, I speak, I write a lot about like the similarities between like energy medicine experiences, near death experiences, psychedelic experiences, where it's very common to connect with this universal love, this higher energy or consciousness or and the transformation that comes from that is is can be really um powerful so i think there's a lot of different ways um where I, what the red flag is of course when someone says this is a technique that is unique to me um it's special mm. i'm channeling yeah. this energy nobody else you have to be trained by me um no one else can do this and etc cetera, etc cetera. like that to me is a red flag because it to me it's that the ego is now involved um and there's corruption there. So, um, but yeah, there are a lot of natural healers. They just, I think, uh, Charlie Goldsmith, he's one of them, um, just naturally knew how to connect and heal people. Um, whether that's from some past life or just the way that he's wired or, so there's a lot of people like that. They're not trained. And then there's a lot of people that are like, you have to be trained for 40 years to be able to do this and, you know, live in the Amazon and da, 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 da. So, I'm trying to constantly drown out those voices, but um, I think there's so many different ways and paths um, to that, um, to healing. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But there are, yeah. Like John of God, for example, if you're familiar with him, like, yeah. So he was kind of like, he's this amazing person. And and then if you're familiar with all the crime around that, I watched the Netflix documentary about it. Yeah. Oh man. So for me, like (laughs) he never sit well with me. Right. But there were a lot of people that were like, Oh, he's done this and this and this and this, but it was so gruesome. Like watching what he did, like putting these instruments up people's noses. And I was like, that's not necessary. (laughs) (laughs) Don't think you need to do that. But he's working with people's beliefs. Right. It's like, Oh, something's happening. Like (laughs) he's done a thing. Yeah. Yeah, But terribly, terribly corrupt. And um, yeah. So it's like the the brighter the light, the darker the shadow kind of thing. And you just got to really be careful um, not thinking that someone is like special, that they have something that other people don't. Because even with Reiki, I'm like, you don't really need to be trained in Reiki. Reiki was the way that I tapped into this. But I think anybody can do this if they have the right intention and focus. Mm. So, yeah. What about in terms of sending this energy to i mean i'm sure it would work with animals as well we talked about people mostly but what about in terms of sending it to for example water and i'm just thinking about mm-hmm. when i spoke to bill bankston like he has it been he's tried to use his method to charge water and then be able to give that to people and i think mm-hmm. he has shown or he's finding that yeah the water is actually very potent they can seemingly charge this water with this healing information as mm-hmm. he calls it um yeah. so have you have you thought about that has anybody tried that in in reiki do you do you think you could try it would it yeah what do you think yeah there's a group um i don't speak japanese so i can't read their research but there is a group in tokyo that's been working on that um cool. working on uh changing the structure of water um they're working with the son of emoto the guy who did the intention water experiments looking at the crystallization and like the if you if you program the water with like i love you for example it, it's more beautiful it's more uniform structure when you turn it into a crystal versus like i hate you or something like that mm. um so similar it's just like charging it with with reiki and um i've heard that it, you can alter the ph in a beneficial way like maybe make it more alkaline um yeah it would be interesting to look at and i don't know if this has been done maybe it has but like clearing pollution um mm. that could be really interesting so there's a lot of studies that can be done and that would be relatively easy to do um yeah. and some people are doing that and i i um i uh taught a course at harvard it was mind body medicine and health and we had a qigong guy come in and he charged the water for us and had us taste it and it definitely like felt more like smooth but i mean <laughs> yeah that's all i could yeah. really tell like from personal <laughs> personal experience but yeah um and people have done with um seed germination like doing uh, energy medicine will improve seed germination like the number of seeds that will germinate and the rate um so yeah. that's really cool working with plants because the more you work with plants cells um, animals you're removing that placebo effect 
mm. mostly. Yeah. So as far as we know, as yeah. far as we know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the pollution, that would be a game changer. If, uh, yeah. if, if this could be used to somehow alleviate that, that would be, uh, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And I have friends who do water ceremonies and do like to them, they are clearing pollution, but I don't, you know, it hasn't been tested mm -hmm. that I know of probably has been there's so much research out there <laughs> yeah i'm gonna try and read a quote to you from your website if my okay old ipad can hang on it's just going absolutely <laughs> crazy it's just uh okay so it's i can see it right now hopefully it's gonna stay here um so this is basically the reason i wanted to ask you this i wanted to get your thoughts on connections potential connections between energy healing and and the afterlife mm -hmm. what comes next so this is the quote so Okay, it's still there. <laughs> During energy healing, loved ones often come through both for the individual receiving the session, but also for the practitioner. And this, and sometimes messages are relayed this way. Energy medicine, particularly Reiki and other spiritual healing techniques, connect the practitioner and the receiver with a greater intelligence. The theory behind this may be that practitioners are connecting through universal love to the one mind, the shared consciousness of all humans, and perhaps other minds as well. And it's just gone. Don't give me one second. Uh, I'm trying to get back. Um, other minds as well. In this non-local space, we have access to information we otherwise do not normal do not during normal waking consciousness. In fact, qualitative reports from my research on Reiki have revealed that Reiki experience is a spiritual experience, often experience of unconditional love, peace, and understanding envelops them. They no longer feel alone, and they feel the presence of their past loved ones. It can be a very powerful multi-level healing experience. This research study was conducted at Harvard with the Center for Reiki Research and will be published this year. Um, so I just thought it was fascinating. You did mention it earlier briefly um, about the idea of yeah people being able to to connect with with deceased relatives or what have you kind of spontaneously mm -hmm. via Reiki um, sessions. So I just mm -hmm. wondered if you could talk a about that a little bit more and, and what your thoughts are on the connections there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. I believe we're all connected um, as as one consciousness, and that consciousness um, fractalizes into lower quote lower consciousnesses. Um, mm. So we may have, say, we have the the ultimate God consciousness, and then we have, say, a consciousness that is the oversoul of all of humanity. Um, and then within that, we have the consciousness of maybe what could be called soul groups or families, um, and it's all through resonance. Um, so when we tapping into this higher consciousness, we're going to resonate with, um, other consciousnesses that are in that particular zone, so to speak. So, mm -hmm. um, we, other research has shown like that you can tap into people easier that, that you're more close to emotionally. So, um, a mother will know when something's happening to her child, for example, um, so there is yeah. like the emotional closeness relates to like the consciousness closeness. Um, so for whatever reason, when we tap in, whoever wants to come or whoever's close, whoever has a message, whoever, you know, I don't know how, why, but they'll, their consciousness, their, which comes across as a personality. Like I think you can put on, so when we have mediumship and stuff, I don't, I don't believe that everyone's kind of carrying on their whole ego and normal self on quote the other side but i think that that can be embodied or, or put on for the the person who's still alive if that makes sense it's like you still yeah. have access to that persona um so somehow they're like they're coming in with that persona so um it's the same way like um different guides so if with shamanism uh, controversial topic sometimes but um, spirit animals will show up. So whatever's resonating with the individual, whatever, whoever's close by, um, <clears throat> if that makes sense. So somehow we're ta I'm tapping into that level and connecting to them. And then, so I'm receiving their connections as well. Um, not always, but if one is powerful enough to come through that has a message, um, that will happen. There was one, one client I had who, I started working on him and his wife was right there who had passed. And she was like, she was kind of like um, protective of his energy. Like, whoa, I'm the one like handling this, like, <laughs> who are you kind of thing. I'm like, okay, like, <laughs> let's do this together. And and I saw her very clearly. I saw, you know, sh short blonde hair, her name, her name started with a D and da -da. 
And sure enough, his wife had passed um, years before. Her name was Dana. She had short blonde hair. Like, And so there's some validation to that. But is she looking that same way on the other side? Maybe not, but that's how she's kind of come in um, to work with him and be with him. So um, yeah, I, I don't know how it works really, but it yeah. does, it does seem to work. <laughs> I like to, I like to explain it, but the way I explain it is like it's, it's love and it's consciousness. And so it's it's not a materialist reduction, you know. <laughs> I know. So, so I for know. some people, I'm, it's not satisfactory. But I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ask you to to give me a, a full explanatory framework. No. <laughs> Don't worry. I mean, in in most of these areas, we just we're just not there yet. Simply, yes, are we as yeah. a species, as a civilization, we're just not there. Yeah, and if if consciousness is you know, the ground of all existence, then it can't be reduced anyway. So it's like, that's what it is. You know, it's not yeah, like, yeah, yeah. There's not a cause before that. Yeah. Yeah. It's all very, very complicated and confusing. I, I asked Bill, Bill Bankston, like how, how does he think it works? You know, what's his best guess at an explanatory framework? And it's, I think you might've had a guess, but it's basically that, yeah, we, we, I just don't know. Don't know yeah. how this works. Don't know why this works on some things. Don't know yeah. why it doesn't work so well on others. Don't get it, but it, but it seems to work mm -hmm. to at least yeah. an extent, which like, even if, even if energy healing, Bill doesn't like to, to use that name for his, his informational healing he prefers. Right, yeah. But, but but whatever we want to call it, if if any of this stuff works, even just like one percent, if we can prove that that's not placebo, mm -hmm. that would be that would be huge, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's the same as the stuff with remote viewing. Like if we can even find people who are correct one percent of the time, yes, with things that they shouldn't be able to know at all. Then, yes, then... yeah, yeah. My um, my old advisor at Harvard used to say, if I can get one monkey to talk, monkeys can talk, mm. you know, it's like the sign language Coco. It's like, okay, they can, they can learn language, but in science, we have to have a certain magnitude to get a significant effect. You know, with the research, we wouldn't say, then it's a case study, then it's weak. It's like, well, it's an example. So it can happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I guess that would lead us on to if you could tell me a little bit about what your thoughts are on the evidence for the survival of consciousness and and what you think happens after we die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. <laughs> um, I love that topic. Big question. I yeah, know. I know. I know. I love that topic. <laughs> um, yeah, there are certain lines of evidence um, that come up again and again as those kind of exemplars of um, consciousness surviving death, um, one being children who remember past lives. I saw that you've, you had an interview with Jim Tucker. So he's, you've obviously covered a lot of that. Um, that's yeah. really, really powerful. Um, those validated cases for which I think there's thousands at this point. Um, mm. um, but yeah, it's still like, it's tough to convince a lot of people still, and that's okay. Um, I think we can still, do a lot of work in shifting culture, at least to like asking the question. Cause prior, like when I started my research, it was like, don't even ask those questions. Cause yeah, you're going to lose credibility even asking those questions. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so children remembering past lives is a really interesting line of evidence. Um, mediumship research as well. Um, yeah. Getting accurate um, information through mediumship. So um, Julie Beichel, Gary Schwartz have done some work with that with, um, very well blinded controlled studies. Um, yeah. and I've had my own experience of, of all this as well. So, um, there's the research and there is, um, I've had like past life experiences as well that were validated, um, distance intention, which we've talked a lot about distance healing, um, near death experiences, of course. Um, that's like one of the first topics I got into when I was younger. Um, cause I wanted to I wanted proof, you know, like I said, life was kind of difficult and I wanted to know like, <laughs> this isn't it, that there's more. So I've read thousands of near death experiences. Um, and yeah, you know, there's obviously people say, well, their brain is just doing stuff. And so we have to find ones where they're actually clinically dead. And then they've had experiences of say, um, I think, I don't know if even Alexander had this experience, but there's been people that have um, been, been uh, clinically dead or close to death 
and then saw a loved one on the other side who hadn't died yet according to them like they didn't know that they died like their aunt for example i don't think eben did okay. have that specific part but yeah lots of, I've, uh, yeah, yeah. lots of people that have so that. so validated experiences like that or where they're they're floating above their body and they see what's happening mm. um and reporting that and um those are rare but they started increasing of course with like more sophisticated resuscitation uh technologies and um so there's it's tough because oh, there's always ways of like there's two i think there's like two main theories with that even still of like survival of consciousness or what's called super yeah. super psi theory like there's just like a database and you can tap into the database and it's like well that's still amazing too <laughs> like maybe yeah. the, maybe these children are just like tapping into some life that wasn't them and they're just like living it well that's still really interesting so let's look at that too yeah. so um so those are the main lines um you could bring psychedelics into that but then people are like well you're just taking a drug so people don't yeah don't don't value that as much if there's some kind of uh, intuitive experience or kind of a, a death experience that happens with uh, psychedelics that can transform people dramatically um still it's like okay well they took a drug so that's not a really strong line of evidence for a lot of people <laughs> um but i think like the clinical death um near-death experiences the the very um well validated past life um and mediumship work probably the strongest lines of evidence that we have and remote viewing is amazing too i mean at least it's showing that our minds extend far beyond the confines of our skull um that's yeah. got to mean something maybe it's just waves you know extended mind theory kind of thing but okay well let's let's study it <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah. so which side do you stand on in terms of the super psi or survival um I think it's both. I think I think there is the database. Yeah, not yeah, that it's yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I think I think we agreed that Psy is essentially like we've we've proven that Psy exists at least. <laughs> yes. uh, whether it's unlimited or not is another question, but we don't know any yeah. limits as of now. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I, so I guess yeah, the the survival stuff is what I really mm -hmm. want to get your your gut feeling on, like not your scientific necessarily yeah, scientific yeah, opinion, yeah. but your your gut feeling, your your personal thoughts. Yeah, I definitely I believe in it. Yeah, just through just through my own experience and um others experiences and these you know the past life memories really yeah. really profound um what that the nature of that survival is i'm not sure i don't you know some yeah. some texts say like oh we just and i'm talking like ancient like the upanishads you know that oh we still retain or maybe it's the dhammapada some believe we still retain like a persona, a personality, like mm -hmm. a sense of individuality. And some believe we just merge into this one mind kind of consciousness thing. Um, I think you can go back and forth. I think you can yeah, yeah, <laughs> dip into the one mind, dip out and experience, um, have a little bit of a, a fragmentation to forget that because you can't, you can't be here and have that experience. Um, you'll go you'll be kind of psychotic essentially like you need some kind of forgetting to yeah, have to have yeah. a life to have an experience um yeah so i think i like to see it as like fractals like consciousness as fractaling um and the maybe this being the the end of the fractal this like ego super ego egoic state where we kind of forget about everything else um and maybe maybe there is another one i don't know kind of feels like we're at the edge here I don't know, <laughs> um, but I like to see it as fractals kind of connecting into a spiral, the center of that spiral being infinitely inward, infinitely. And that's like the zero point. That's the the one mind, the portal into it, which is yeah. which is everywhere. So I see all these little like spiral spirals everywhere. And we can I don't know. It's hard to think of it spatially because it's not really like that, but. It is definitely hard. But it's, it's, <laughs> you've definitely thought about it, and there's, yeah. there's interesting thoughts. I like it. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I agree. I think it's so fascinating, and and I love, I love to think about. Or I love to think about. I'm fascinated when I think about the idea of yeah, do we retain yeah personality, mm -hmm, memories, mm -hmm. and 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 that, or do mm -hmm. we do we melt back into the the universal consciousness? Mm -hmm. I definitely like to think we retain. Yeah, some, we want to some yeah. sense of personality. For me, it's about again, like I want to retain my relationships. You know, that's the, yeah, that's really exactly, the big yeah, exactly, thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but then they say, yeah. well, in that space, it won't matter because you are them. It's like okay. Yeah, 
And and also even even in the sense that maybe if if you're not, if we don't melt back in, even though we're all part of probably this universal consciousness, either way, whether we melt back in or not, it's like it's just what it is. But yeah, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that we will continue to be able to connect with the people we have yes, relationships with. Exactly. Right? So, yes. Exactly. So have yeah. to hope for hope that that is is on the money and that it's not just <laughs> yeah. there to confuse us I hope like so. so much of yeah. this yeah i know yeah. i always take thought experiments where i'm like okay this is there's nothing after this and then i'm like really let myself feel that and it, it's hard because i do really believe the other way it's hard i have to like force myself to be like oh and that's how my brother is he's, he's the opposite of me with that it's like we're you know we die that's it you you know yeah and i'm like oh that's such an awful way to live <laughs> Oh. Do, you, do you talk about it? Do you, do you get into it with your brother? Do you talk to him about it? Or we, it like yeah, a, I used to. Now uh, you've both learned to, yeah, to not. <laughs> yeah, because he, yeah, he's like, um, could be a lot of the motivation for doing what I do too, because he's always like, nope, like you're wrong. Like <laughs> we die and that's yeah. it, you know? Sounds like he'd get on with my brother, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so I'm, I think it was like 2011 where we had a little, he was like, you know, there are multiverses. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, so it means we're even less important. Like we're nothing. I was like, okay. And we got into a little spat and it was Christmas 2011. And that was the, and I ate Christmas dinner alone. And I was like, that's it. Oh, no. I, I am not doing this anymore. Like I just got to let it go. Cause it's my own ego being triggered. Like, why do I, why do I care? It's like, I get like this. Well, I guess you, you want him to, 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 to know about this stuff. Cause you want him to, you know, on some level like feel better and exactly. feel like more at peace but yes. i guess they would fight back and tell us they don't need that to feel at peace and yeah, you know like yeah. some people some people genuinely i'm always shocked when i read people saying this but some people say i i hope there's nothing after i want it to be and yeah. i think it's probably just a symptom of a very unhappy life so exactly it's, it's i've heard the, i've heard the same as well yeah and i think yeah that that would be someone wanting to not live and that is very sad. Yeah. I, I yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I want to reduce suffering. I think that's one of like the main, my main motivations from the beginning was like, I want people to know um, mm. that you're not alone and that you're going to live after this and that we're all part yeah. of one. And, and that, that there's and... loads of research about it. Exactly. <laughs> it's not just us saying it, like there's yeah. stuff that you can read and look at. And, and yeah. yeah. And it was just recently that I spoke to my brother again about it because, you know, we lost our mother and then our, our grandparents are getting really old. And I'm like, you know, it's really easier if you know that we survive, you know, like, and, and my mom was a huge believer and she on, on her deathbed said her, her, um, family asked like are you scared and she said no because everything natalie taught me and that was like that's the ultimate it was like yeah that's what i wanted it was like yeah. maybe all of this was just for that so that she could go and know like she's gonna be okay yeah. and she was actually excited she's like i can't wait i'm so excited like it's gonna be like a party <laughs> like um so that's really really powerful and i think that's been because i witnessed suffering in my parents and i witnessed like yeah a lot of suffering and ignorance and it's like I want to turn the light on like i want people to remember because i feel like it's a remembering it's not yeah like a new new information so my brother was talking about how sad it is my grandparents are getting older and i just i kind of wanted to just again like it's okay <laughs> like yeah. and then he's like i'm never gonna believe what you believe <laughs> i was like okay i said but there's <laughs> there's like data and support he's like i don't want to read it it's a waste of time and i'm like uh, yeah. okay so you're willfully not learning okay that's fine and then i just had to let it go and i said but science will shift and he's like no it won't <laughs> <laughs> okay oh yeah so yeah it's and, tough isn't it but i feel like that's <laughs> like that's if he was totally into it and all that maybe i wouldn't be doing what i'm doing so part of it is mm. like i'll show you <laughs> <laughs> maybe one day you'll get him same same with same with my brother maybe yeah. maybe by some random stroke of luck he's listening to this now and he's like oh yeah you're oh. not gonna get me <laughs> yeah but, but i i doubt it yeah. <laughs> um we haven't got long left natalie but i wanted you could if you could quickly talk to talk about um this this thing you worked on a little while ago i don't know when exactly the universal love scale mm, i thought that yeah. was interesting and and kind of it resonates with a lot of the stuff we've discussed yeah so yeah universal love um which is unconditional love for all of existence it's it can be kind of projected onto people so when i'm doing a session i'm embodying universal love it's like this unconditional love um non-judgmental 
but I am involving a person into it. So we like to say it's a non-subjective love, but we can kind of give it to people, if that makes sense. It's unconditional love um, mm-hmm. for all of existence. And, and it's a huge part of the transformative aspect of um, peak psychedelic experiences, near-death experiences, um, energy healing or information healing, whatever you want to call it, um, that that can be a really powerful component. And it, I also believe that's how we can connect um, one of the ways um, that we can connect across distance and connect with other people's consciousness and pick up information. Um, so <clears throat> Mario Beauregard and myself um, and Gary Schwartz, um, we decided that um, if we want to study that concept of universal love, that we you have to have a, a way of measuring it. And it's not like a, yeah. it's a self-report measure, just like how that's how you measure anything psychological, any, any love, compassion, um, mm. even pain, like any of these things, it's like, yes, you, you know, you're answering a questionnaire of some kind. So it is like, it is yeah. a questionnaire, but the idea is like, can we measure it? So then we can say scientifically that this is a construct. Um, and then you can do different interventions. Um, and you, or you can like, um, look at the universal love as a mediator for certain things, for example, So a study that, um, well, first, yeah, the scale looks at the embodiment of universal love. So universal love is just like, it's just love, right? Sorry, there's like a fluff. It's just love. But when we're experiencing it, we have certain thoughts, beliefs, um, behaviors, feelings. Um, So the scale taps into all of that um, and transcendent components. So things like I wish for other people to be happy. You know, that's like one kind of embodied aspect of universal love or I, um, I'm drawn towards humanitarian work, you know, these kinds of things are evidence for you're tapping into this kind of love for, for all of existence. Um, so we scientifically validated that, yes, universal love is a concept and it's, it's correlated to certain things that you would expect, like empathy, um, compassion, um, negatively correlated with narcissism, um, anger, aggression, these kinds of things. So we, uh, I think it was published 2020, Um, we validated it. It's a construct, it exists, (laughs) it's a thing. Um, And now we can start to study it. So one of the, like like we spoke about, I think universal love is very important in Reiki and probably other forms of healing as well. Um, So a study that I'm starting right now is to look at universal love as a mediating factor for the effectiveness of a Reiki session. Um, So that means like looking at the universal love of the practitioner. So having them complete that form and then looking at all their outcomes and, and, and connecting the two. So are those practitioners that are higher in universal love showing greater reductions in pain in their clients, for example, and then also not just because it's kind of like a trait measure. It's like how universally loving are they overall really but also like how much are you feeling it during the session that's really important too because you can be high in universal love but during the reiki you're thinking about like what you're going to do for dinner and then you're not really tapping into that that love yeah so we want to also just ask them like during that session how much how much love did you feel you know and then associating that so it's it was important to create a tool like that so that we can then answer these questions um so that's that's the universal love scale. <laughs> nice. Well, that's that's cool and that's important. And and as you've said a few times, or at least alluded to, like love is seemingly like intricate and and, and like involved in all of these areas. Like love yeah. is kind of almost synonymous with consciousness. And like you know, is love like fundamental? Like people come back mm-hmm. from NDS, don't they? And and they'll say mm-hmm. like. Uh, Oh, I found out the meaning of everything, and it's love, and, yeah, and you know, and stuff yeah. like this, and it, and it, yeah, it's 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 kind of a it ends up being kind of cheesy to some people, but you know that's the way it is. <laughs> it's like, <Yeah. laughs> you know, that's just the way it is. Yeah. Like, people see it as a survival thing. Same with consciousness, che- like both cheesy. <laughs> Sorry, I, I was just going to interrupt you to say like cheesy. Think about that, you know, like that's a word that people like used ages ago to try and like negatively yeah. reference things that probably were like heartwarming and nice and wholesome, you know, like, oh, that's cheesy because yeah. you're showing weakness. Yeah. It's like it goes back to that old thing of like, yeah, we we reward like tough men and we like, you know, look down on men who showed our emotional mm-hmm. side and things like that. And yeah, it's yeah. probably the same thing, the yeah. cheesy thing. Like, so cheesiness is probably good, I guess. Yeah, because like not, <laughs> if it's with not, the right intentions. Yeah, not a lot of people are studying love. And maybe that's why Maybe it's like, oh, it's just 
kind of yeah. kind of cheesy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think it, Julia Mossbridge is like interested in that as well, and and yeah, maybe there are going to be some more people looking at it seriously. But it absolutely does seem to be a fundamental aspect of reality, and how how the love and the consciousness sort of interact. That's interesting to me too. Um, mm. I'm not sure, yeah. but I I do know that the love helps us connect consciousness. So, mm. and and love definitely makes everything better makes us a better place yes. it makes people yes. nicer it makes yes. people more connected um one of the last things i'm just going to ask you uh just for your again thoughts in a nutshell on is the ufo phenomenon mm. uh, do you follow this at all are you yeah. aware of like recent updates and happenings and goings on yeah. have you ever seen a ufo yeah. and yeah just what are your thoughts yes, yes, <laughs> okay, yes. <cool> <laughs> um was definitely interested in it as a kid uh my parents watched x files and that probably got me into it um so definitely have interested in it since probably like seven or so. Um, and then got reinterested in it. Um, I don't know how that even happened. It's just, I guess it just gets kind of grouped into these topics sometimes. Um, so um, I did a lot of research on it um, around like the Disclosure Project, um, Stephen Greer's work, mm -hmm. um, John Mack and his work at Harvard with the, yeah, the, that's some incredible work and how they, they try to fire yeah. him and oh, um, <clears throat> really, really, really interesting. Um, so I know, or I know, I mean, I think that they've been covering this up for a long time, governments. Um, it's been a phenomenon for a long time, um, but it's very muddy waters and there's been, you know, some reverse engineering going on, some creating of crafts by governments and um, it's gotten very complicated. And then recently, um, with the Pentagon saying like, oh, we've been studying this from, I think they said like 2004 or something, like we started this program. It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, they tried to say some things. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't trust certain groups that have come forward recently. Um, what, you know, what it can be used for a lot of things. I mean, it can definitely be used in a negative way by governments to control population. Um, mm -hmm. I definitely believe in um, extraterrestrial intelligence, um, whether every craft contains a, a being from another planet or another dimension, I don't know. I think it's very messy right now. Um, and I have I have seen um, UFOs, different kinds. I've seen um, one that I, I feel like was in the infrared spectrum for whatever reason, I don't know why. I just, it was very, barely visible this kind of like translucent sort of massive ship and i saw it in arkansas um and i've seen like lights moving um i've seen like a little very small thing and this was before they had drones so i don't know like it didn't look like it was manned it was a very small thing with like um three spheres like three metal spheres it's really interesting um so I've seen a few things, yeah, and I've had um, dreams and things like that, but I haven't, I wouldn't call myself like an abductee or anything like that, <laughs> but I'm definitely okay. interested in it, very, very interested yeah. in it, and watching what the government does with it, because I don't trust them. <laughs> Would you, would you call yourself an experiencer? And who who does trust the government? If anybody well. does, then they, they, they don't really know what they're doing. <laughs> um. Would I call myself an experiencer? Like um, how how provocative are the dreams? Do they kind of give you pause for thought? Do you question like has something else? Is it I've had a like, dream? Yeah, I've had well, I've had channeling experiences. I don't really I've never talked about that um publicly, but um one day when this voice, sorry, I'm gonna sound crazy, but it was like turn off your laptop and I turned it off and this energy came through. I was already doing Reiki at the time, so I was probably like a bit open and it was like a, a group of beings that said they were from um, the Beta, Beta Aries. And I was like, Beta Aries, okay, like whatever. And that they're like a healing center, intergalactic healing center for beings that forget that they're part of the light, like that have gone so far into darkness. And then they come and there were so all these different races. And so I was like, okay. And I wrote all this down and, um, and I never used that resort. Like they were like, talk to us anytime and i don't know why i just never <laughs> but beta aries happens to be one of the stars of the aries constellation of the the horn on one of the Aries. so i didn't even know that and so me that was like confirmation. so you didn't know that before no no really? and i was like oh cool okay and um and my dog wow. that's what did it for me my dog where i saw this energy 
was like growling and barking. And, and then I was like, why is she reacting that way? And they were like, well, if she sees the energy, but she doesn't yeah. understand, like she has no idea what's going on. So she's like, what the heck is this? So her reaction to what I saw, I was like, wow. Okay. That's what did it yeah. for me. But so I, I wouldn't call myself an experiencer though, even though I've had like some kind of experience. I don't feel like nothing was invasive or like, I don't feel like I was taking. What did you see? What were you looking at? It was just like, it's like the space kind of moves. And then there were, I could tell there were like multiple energies there. Um, I could like the different races kind of, I mean, but I did been, you communicate back? Did you say like, why are you, why are you talking to me? How are you doing this? What's going on? <laughs> who are you? <laughs> yeah. Well, who are you? Yeah. Well, first I was Show like, me ID. first I was like, are, are you of the light is what I said, which was funny. And as soon as I asked that, I laughed because I was like, oh my God, like that's a silly question. Like it was just an <laughs> obvious, like, because I was learning about reptilians and stuff and just like, oh. Um, and uh, yeah, and they just said, this is like, we're outside of time. Because I was like, when can I talk to you? And they were like, anytime. Like, this is like, it's like a- and you're hearing that come into your head. Yeah. Right? That, that yeah. Voice. Yeah. So- Wow. I don't know. I've never talked about process. that. I've never <laughs> talked about that before. So, Yeah. <laughs> Um, that was a long time ago. That was like 2009 or something. So yeah, I don't, well, I don't tap in like that anymore. I don't know. I just, but it was an interesting experience. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Sounds <laughs> it just to say the least. Yeah. It sounds, uh, sounds yeah. wild. Um, look, I should let you get going, but thank you so much for this today. I Thanks, really appreciate man. your time and uh, I've loved learning about Reiki and hearing about some of your experiences before I let you go. Have you got any last words or a message you want to send to anybody that's watched or listened? Um, no, I just, I think it's, it's great that you have this platform and this podcast and, um, I hope people just keep learning and yeah, growing our, our information. And I'm really happy to see that it seems like there's a cultural shift happening. So, um, I would just encourage everyone to just learn more and go with your own, um, feelings and intuition as well. And, and, uh, and yeah, be careful of the healers that say it's just them or whatever. <laughs> yeah yeah the messiahs the, yeah exactly anyway, yeah thank you so right. much i i really appreciate it and and i wish you all my best okay thanks ben thank you to natalie for talking with me thank you for listening and thank you to our patrons for helping to make it happen please see the description to find relevant links and more if you enjoyed the interview and want to continue unraveling the universe with us please subscribe if you want to help us keep making content you can contribute via patreon thank you